So now that we've learned how to enter different types of invoice and how to run the vendor line item reports and age analysis reports, let's have a look at processing a manual payment as our first payment option. So in SAP, the transaction code is F-53 or post outgoing payment. So the scenario here is we'll post an outgoing payment to declare an open accounts payable invoice. So in this scenario, an actual physical payment has already been processed by the banks. So the cash has already gone out of your account, but we now want to record that payment in SAP to clear the vendor account. For our master data, we'll use our PA Electronics Vendor 3511, company code 3000, and you'll notice that the default document type will be a KZ for vendor payment, and this is our bank account that we're going to use um, to uh, have our credit for cash going out. So let's see what that looks like in the system. So to process the payment, it's going to be under accounting and financial accounting and under accounts payable. And, uh, you know, we've used the different, uh, you know, document entry screens, but what you'll see here is that I want to first display the line items first before we enter the payment so you can understand what you're trying to pay. So I'm going to look at open items for, th for vendor 3511. So let's first identify an item that we want to pay to give you some context. So if we look at the open items for the spender, You'll see the standard line items are there. Look at what's due, what's not due. This very last item here, we can see for $10, this thing has been overdue forever, 4,700 days in arrears. So we really want to do a manual payment to, to clear this item because it's way overdue and it's not part of the standard run. So let's open up another SAP session and now let's go into the payment transaction. So if I go to accounting, financial accounting, accounts payable, and go through our um, documents and we really want to select here outgoing payments to actually process the payment now that we've identified the line item we want to pay. So F-53 post, we're not going to print any checks or forms or anything. We're just going to create a payment to clear this item as we've already settled it. So when we go into the post transaction, first thing we need to do is give ourselves a document date and a posting date and you'll see there the KZ document type defaults for um, outgoing payments and for company code 3000. So I'm just going to enter a reference here. This was a manual payment, some kind of cash batch reference from the payment that's already been made. And this is where you enter the bank account. So this is going to be your cash account where the cash is coming out of that I'm going to enter. And this is where we're going to enter the amount. So that's why we looked at the line items first to figure out how much we were going to pay. So we're going to enter $10. And this is a field for bank charges. I'm not going to enter any now. But um, so let's get into the $10 because we know that's what we need to pay for the document type KZ, company code 3000. So now we, we need to look at the offset account because this is for the credit side. So for the open items, this is where we select our vendor. So the account type K here is for vendor. I'm just going to drop down so you can see that. That K is for vendor in the SAP system. And this is why that's sitting in that part of the transaction. So the bank account is for the credit. This is going to be for the debit side of the entry. So here we select our vendor, let's select 3511, and we're just going to make sure that standard open items are selected. That's what that OI is, it means select open items, and we can then process the open items. So the system has now pulled up all of the open items for vendor 3511. And so to kind of prove that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump to the vendor line item report again that we ran so that you can see the same line items in the FBL1N transaction and this $10 here are also displayed in this processing open items transaction here. And there's our $10 that we want to pay. So you'll notice that the amount entered here reflects the bank account of 10, but we've not assigned anything. So we've got a not assigned value of 10. So to assign data, we double click the item we want to pay. So I've double clicked it, it's turned blue. And now you can see we've got an assignment of 10 and the not assigned is now zero. So we've now entered 10 with a bank and we've got 10 assigned by double clicking on that line item. If I go to the overview, you'll see here's the cash accounts again where the credit is going to occur. So that's a separate line for the bank account. And if you go process open items just to get back, these are the vendor open items that we want to pay. In this case, I'm going to select one item. You can do more, but now we've got a, an assignment of 10 and we're all matching and now we can save and post. So if I post that transaction, it will now clear that open item that's been matching. 10 and 10, all looking good. So now you see a document 1500 has been posted in company code 3000.
So let's quickly display that document. We can take a shortcut from the top menu here to go document display. We'll be able to look at that payment document. So let's display that payment document. So here you'll see document number 15000. That's our manual payment. And there we've got our outgoing cash. And there you'll see we've got our, our debit to PA electronics for the actual uh, vendor being paid. So that's really how you entered your payment document. So we really found an open item where we wanted to pay, entered our $10 and then made the payment and cleared it. So going back to the payment screen here, I just really want to display the vendor open item again now. So at the moment, this $10 was sitting here, right? So let's refresh the report so you can see what happens. If I refresh the line item report, watch what happens to that 10. See that $10 line has disappeared because it's no longer an open item. So that's really the impact of posting that payment. So if I go back, run the vendor line item report again, but this time choose all items, not just open items, and execute, you'll now see that we've now got items that are in red, which are the open items, and then the green traffic light denotes the cleared items. And this is where you'll see the payment and the invoice that we matched and cleared for the $10. So our payment is the KZ document type, matched to the invoice or the RE document. So this is really to show you the effect of open item management where the green are cleared and the red are open. So let's we'll go back to the report again, click open items only again for the vendor and execute just to confirm when you've cleared an item that now disappears from the open item list. So you now are only viewing the data that still needs to be paid and analyzed. So that's processing your open payment. Really great transaction. Just remember that the, the bank Transaction goes in the top of the account for the bank and your vendor amount, uh, your vendor account goes in the bottom. So credit from the bank and this is your vendor account that's going to take the debit with your amount in the middle. And that's how to process a manual payment. So now that you have learned how to process a manual payment and clear or match an open item to a payment, I want to show you now how to clear and match open items that do not need, that do not need to be paid. The transaction code here is F-44, clear vendor open items. So the scenario here is we have two vendor open items, but no payment is required. But we want to keep the vendor open item statement easy to manage and not have these items clutter up um, the uh, payment screen whenever you are now matching payments in future. So in this case, we, we've got an invoice that was processed, but after a dispute with a vendor, the invoice was canceled or reversed. So no payment is needed and no journal needs to be posted, but we want to match these open items to, to clear them off. So for this, we'll use the uh, vendor 3511 and company code 3000. So let's uh, jump into that SAP uh, demonstration. So first, let's display the vendor line item so you can see which items that we want to match and clear. So let's go to accounts payable, and then um, it's, we're not going to enter a document this time. We're going to be looking at the line items and clearing matching items. So let's go to account and look at our vendor line item display, the FBL1N. Um, you must be getting very familiar with this transaction by now in this course, but it is very useful. So in FBL1N, let's enter the vendor number, 3511, and let's process open items and see what we can see. So looking at these open items here, you'll see they've all got a red traffic light that they're open. These two line items at the bottom, these are the ones we want to focus on. You'll see they're both blocked for payment with a B in the payment block column. We had some text here where we uh, mentioned our vendor dispute before, and then we learned how to do an MR8M transaction to cancel the vendor invoice. So we've got two contra documents here, but they're both showing as open items and clutching up our vendor statement. So that's why we want to clear or match these two, but no journal is required as they contra each other out. So let's go back to the menu and you'll find the clearing transaction right under the line item display. So let's go into the clearing transaction, F-44, enter our vendor account number, We've got our clearing um, date period and our company code 3000. We're going to select open items for that vendor and then simply process open items to get a list. You'll see this looks very familiar to the manual uh, payment entry screen. So this is a list of all open items for that vendor. And we know we've got these two that can be matched together, the 250 debit and credit. 
So right now we have not entered any inf- any values like we did on a payment, and there's nothing assigned at this stage. So let's double click the item to select it, the first blue one. It's highlighted in blue now, and you can see we've assigned a 250 credit. So now if we um, double click or select the second item to match, they both lit up in blue now, you'll see that the assigned now shows a zero and amount entity zero. A little confusing that they both show zero, but it's because they're both contra. But the fact that they lit up in blue means you've selected them. If you look at the overview, unlike the payments entry, you'll see there's nothing that's going to post here. So let's go back to process open items. We've selected our two items. They're a perfect contra. That's why there are no values. And let's save and post that and see the impact. So now this document posted is a clearing document only. It's not an actual journal. It's a clearing document. And to show the impact of that, if you clicked process open items again for the spender, you'll see that the uh, two line items now have disappeared, those two 250s. So now when you need to do future payments, they won't clutter up the display and get in the way. If we back out, we'll just prove that a bit more now by looking at the vendor line item report. So running FBL1N, display vendor line items. If we choose all items instead of just open items, you'll see that a clearing document. If we execute that, the um, items in green below are the uh, cleared items, and you'll see, we'll highlight them now. These are the two items that we matched, the 250 debit and credit, and there's the clearing document number that was posted to match those two items off. So that will now clean up the vendor statement and match those two. If we back out of this now and run open items, you'll then see the impact again for the same vendor, execute that report, and now you'll see we've got the red traffic light items, open items only for payment, analyzing this balance, we no longer get cluttered by those other two numbers. So the F-44 clear open item transaction is right below the line items. There's no journal or payment that's going to be made, but you can match off items that can clear the vendor open item statement. So that's clear match open items.